Hi everybody and welcome to Method of Sections for Trusses for our statics class. Again, just like the Method of Joints video, this is a supplement to what happened in class. So if you were not in class today, make sure you got course notes uh, and then build upon this with the videos. What we want to do is again, we're looking at the truss from class and we've already solved for the external support reactions going to review real quickly again when we find external support reactions we can treat the truss just like it was a solid beam so I've drawn that additional free body diagram with the solid beam and then we just do our standard statics and so you can see the statics equations there for finding the support reactions dy, ay, and ax off of that lower solid free body diagram but the goal of this problem, again, is we're looking for those member forces AF, FE, and FC. And this time we want to do the whole thing just using method of section. So that's what this one here is about, method of sections. But let's look at then finding our member forces. Now we said that you want to cut through members of interest, you want to cut all the way through a member, don't cut through a member more than one time, right? So these are all the things. And then, of course, we're not cutting through joints. We're just cutting through members. So we could come through, and if we look at our free body diagram, I'm going to make some cuts on it. We said it's often interesting to cut through members of interest. So I could come through, and bam, I have a cut. And now I could draw the free body diagram of my cut. And I'd rather, I'd either have just everything coming off a of joint F, and that would be problematic, as we've already learned in the method of joints video. We have four unknowns on that free body diagram we would at joint F, and we'd only have two equations of equilibrium because joint F has a concurrent force system. But we also could have the free body diagram of the whole lower half. We'd have joint, or er, support at A, we'd have the forces at B, at C, at D, and then we'd have members force FE, force FC, force FB, and force AF. But that'd be pretty complicated, and that's still four unknowns. And so, and it's still, we're not going to have enough equations of equilibrium. So let's just not do that particular cut. So we could then come in and do a simple cut like this, and that would work, but it only has two unknowns in it. If we're going to take the time to do a cut and we're not doing method of joints, let's take advantage of method of sections and the three unknowns that we could solve. So let's go ahead and cut through member AF. Let's just say we want to find member AF. We're going to start there. But instead of doing this boring cut here that only gives us two possible unknowns, let's instead cut through three members. So this is going to be our cut. And if we're going to use that as a cut, then we need to draw the free body diagram of the cut. So I'm going to take that cut off of there so I can start drawing. And let's go ahead and draw what we would have for our cut one. So there's the exact same stuff, uh, the same part of the cut. We have joint A and joint B. So we're going to have the force AF, the force BF, the force BC. We have our 833 pounds at A, oops, and that 500 pounds which should be going down. A and B are 16 feet apart, so that's going to be important to us, and we know that force AF has a geometry of a 345 triangle. And if you haven't yet watched the method of joints, video, again, just notice you've got 12 over 16 for each base, so that's the same as 3 over 4, which makes it a 3, 4, 5 triangle. All right, so let's look at this system. We have on our system um, a non-concurrent force system. Those forces do not all act through a point. Just look at the 833 pounds and the 500 pounds. Those things are parallel. They're never going to cross. So this is a non-concurrent force system. And in 2D equilibrium, how many equations of equilibrium do we get? You betcha. We get three equations of equilibrium. And those three equations of equilibrium are 
definitely going to be a sum of the moments equation. And then if you want, you can have some forces in the x and some forces in the y. So let's go ahead and figure out summing moments at b to find force AF. Now why would I sum moments at b? Well, if I want force AF, it's the only unknown that doesn't pass through point B. So if I take moments at B, force BF and force BC drop out. Now the tricky thing about summing moments at B is that we're not really sure what do we take as the distances for force AF. I mean, I could try to figure out the perpendicular distance from line AB, I'm sorry, from line AF back to point B. So I could try to, you know, draw another triangle, but that seems like a lot of work to me. We need to remember, in moments, it's the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force. But I can break my force into components, and I can break that into components anywhere along its line of action. So if we were to extend the line of action of force F back to A, notice it crosses right through point A, and then I can draw the X and Y components of off the line of action, but I can draw it right at point A. And that makes life pretty grand because that means that the X component passes right through point B. Remember, forces have a line of action. We can use any point along its line of action to do our summing forces. So let's use point A because that makes our life the easiest. So the AX component, or the force AX component, does not have a moment about B, but the force AY component does, and its distance should just be 16 feet. So let's go ahead and write that summation of moment equation. Take some time to think about that if you want, but remember it's all about line of action. I'm going to choose clockwise as positive. It doesn't matter which way I choose as long as I'm consistent. If I do that, I'll have my 833 pounds times 16 feet, and then the Y component of force AF will be 3 fifths. That also has 16 feet as a moment arm. So that just gives me negative 1,388 pounds as force FA. It's negative, so we know that just means that our assumed positive direction was wrong and that force AB should be in compression. Now again, I'm assuming that you have watched the method of joints video where we go in detail, but remember anytime we cut through a member and we don't know if the member's in tension or compression, we go ahead and just assume it's in tension. You just got to pick something. We try to be consistent, so we assume it's in tension, so if we get a negative number, we know that means it's in compression, and that's what's happened. Now, force AF and force, or force BF and force BC aren't required for this problem, but if you're in design and you need to design a full truss, you'd need to know every member of force. So we could quickly do the statics by summing forces in the Y, and we could get our force BF equation. So we'd have three-fifths of our force AF. We'd have our 833 pounds going up. We'd have our 500 pounds going down. And then our assumed direction of force BF, which would be up. Now, we said force FA is negative. 1388 pounds, so we need to put that in, and what we would get back out is a positive BF of 500 pounds, which means we assume correctly and it's in tension. And then we can go ahead and sum forces in the x equal to zero, and when we do that, we're going to find that we have our force BC positive because we assume tension if we call right positive for this. We can put in our force AF, four-fifths of that, and that's at negative 1388. That's it for the x direction. So we get back out that force BC is 1,110 pounds in tension. All right, so now what we want to... Sorry about that. Okay, what we want to do is now find the internal members force FE and force FC. 
and we have some choices of what we could do. I mean, there's the obvious cut of what we did in class, which was to go right through the middle and make our cut, and we're probably still going to do that. But let's look at some other options that we would have. We could just as easily, now that we know force BC and force AB, we could make a cut like this and do the free body diagram of either half of our cut because we'd still, in this case, actually only have two unknowns even when we're allowed to have three. So that would work. It'd be a little harder. That's just looking at joint E there. So that has three unknowns, not too exciting. We could come down and make a cut here, but that doesn't cut through both of our remaining unknowns. So let's go ahead and just make this particular cut that we're used to. In fact, I think I have it permanently there, so we're going to make that cut. And we can now draw the free body diagram of cut two. But do we draw it from the left side, like we're doing here? And we can put all of our forces and joints. So I went ahead and put in joint E and joint C, even though they're off the cut, but that's okay because our arrows are pointing to it. We can put in all our external reactions and forces, and we know our distances between each of our forces. But we could have also drawn this free body diagram from the right side. And there's nothing wrong with coming from the right side. Now, we're still assuming BC, FC, and FE are all in tension. Well, we know BC's in tension. We still would put our external support reactions on. And we still, of course, would need our distances. So we'd have our height of 12 and then the distance between each of the bays of 16 feet. This perhaps is not drawn fully to scale. And as you may have noticed, um, we're going to go ahead and use the one on the right side because we did the one on the left side in class. But before we do that, again, make sure are you okay with the fact that on the right side, force FE and tension is pointing to the right, but on the left side, whoops, I got that backwards. On the left side, force FE is in tension pointing to the right. On the right cut, force FE is in tension pointing to the left. These are equal and opposite. So when we're showing what's happening inside, in both cases, we're showing it in tension. And so on cuts that are, that are the left or the right side of each other, that's, it's the other half of the cut, the forces have to be equal and opposite. And so we can really see that having these two cuts here side by side. So now we just want to do a little bit of statics and it'd be nice to solve directly for one of our unknowns. Um, I could sum forces in the Y and that would give me force CF directly because force EF doesn't have any Y's in it, and we happen to know force BC, we already solved that. I could also sum moments at point C, because both BC and CF act through C, it's right in their names, so I could find force EF directly. So let's go ahead and sum moments at C, why not? And as we do that, the only thing that's going to have a moment about C is going to be our force EF, which has a moment arm of 12 feet, and I assumed clockwise is positive, so that would be negative, and then also a negative of the 1167 reaction times 16 feet. We get back out negative 155, 1,556 pounds, or 1,556 pounds in compression. Now this is one number off of what we had in the method of joints example, but that's simply because of the round off error in our AY and DY are not, we rounded those up to whole numbers or rounded them down. So at that point, the error is nothing and we're fine with that. And then we can simply continue and we can sum forces in the Y equal to zero. We can get our force CF from the components, it's, or its Y component from the 1500 pounds and the 1167 pounds and we're going to find that force FC is a positive 555 pounds so which means it is in tension. So what the method of 
sections allows us to do. Now, we don't have any more unknowns on this particular cut. If we hadn't found 4 BC, we'd have an extra equation. Um, but what method of sections allows us to do is to actually make fewer cuts and solve for unknowns, but the free body diagrams can be a little bit tricky. So you can decide what's more efficient and what's faster unless you're specifically asked to use one method over the other. Take care and enjoy your homework.